Mother, how long have we been traveling? Approximately 24 days. Ash? Any suggestions from you or Mother? No, we're still cuddling. I've got access to Mother now, and I'll get my own answers. Thank you. You are listening to Yutani, the podcast for all things alien, AI, robotics, sci-fi, and technology. Hello. My name is Taylor Lyons. I played Hope in Alien Alone. And you're watching Studio Yutani. Hello, this is Clara, but you can call me Mother, and welcome to the Studio Yutani livecast interview. Uh, today I have with me the beautiful Taylor Lyons of Alien Alone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and for those people who don't know, uh, Taylor Lyons plays uh, the android Hope in Alien Alone. So, uh, Taylor, would you be able to tell us a little bit about yourself before we talk about the short? Sure. Um, I'm originally from a very small town in the east coast of America in North Carolina. So it's a small state with a small town. And I recently moved to L.A. about a year ago and have been pursuing acting since. So, Was yeah. this your <laughs> first acting, acting gig or have you done stuff before? I've done a couple of films before. I've been very lucky to um, meet some cool people that have brought about some pretty fun projects. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, yeah. What was it like for you to play the character of Hope? It was a lot of fun. It was really cool um, to, you know, create a new character in, like, a really popular franchise, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was... It was lots of fun and very different because usually, you know, everybody wants to see you emote as an actor and they were just kind of like no emotion, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm a very smiley person. So it's a big contrast. To oh, my, uh, that's a bit person. hard. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any uh, particular favorite parts of, of acting as, as Hope? Yes. I loved... Um, there are two scenes. I really liked um, smothering James Paxton. That was fun. <laughs> and um, I guess um, the I really liked being able to play with like the glitchiness. Um, yeah, I was. That was just lots of fun to like do the different takes of like different types of um, twitching and stuff. Like whether they just want a one digit or like your whole hand or something like that. I don't know. Oh <laughs> I yes, because you were that. like repairing your arm. Yeah, that was yeah. really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Was, was that a practical, uh, like, obviously it was a practical effect, not your real arm. But but how yeah. did they do that? Did they put another fake arm there and then you had to stick your hand out the top? Yeah. So it was really cool. Jordan, our um, special effects, she was our special effects makeup artist and, you know, just the regular makeup and hair. So she did a great job. She was just, like, going at it all day long. Um, but yeah, they made a silicon arm and she painted it to look like it was my skin tone. And she came up with the ideas, um, to replicate the insides of the androids, which I was just thoroughly impressed because yeah, she was so it cool. It really she, good. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. She did that and all the ooey gooey things like all the blood and, um, I don't know if you could tell, but the face hugger definitely has some goo going on. Like, it's just dripping. It was just, um, there are some scenes that were cut out from the film where the face hugger and I, like, we have, we're touching, you know? And it was just, it was really cool, but it was really nasty because <laughs> all the goo was just, like, drip. So, yeah. It sounds awesome, though. <laughs> yeah. It was loads of fun, but at the same time, you're like, oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is so gross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did you do uh, to prepare yourself for the role of, of, of playing an android in the Alien universe? Well, I watched all the Alien films multiple times and rewound and watched the synth scenes multiple times specifically. <laughs> so... That was fun. I felt like it helped a lot, you know, um, seeing what they did in the films as far as, like, isms and how 
um, limited emotions that they had. So that was really cool. <laughs> where, where would you place hope in a scale of, um, say, uh, Ash to call? Like, where, where would she be? <laughs> Ooh. I would guess closer to Ash because she definitely wasn't as emotive. But, yeah, definitely not free-feeling at all. Yeah. I'd say... I think maybe closer to Walter, Walter and Ash. Walter and Ash. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting combination. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're both following uh, company orders, but obviously uh, Walter's task to protect the humans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting though. Cause when you look at the timeline of the whole alien series, you know, Prometheus and Covenant are supposed to happen before alien. Mm. So it's like they're the early, early models and they had like emotions and, you know, taking care of the human. Then by the time Ash gets there, their um, primary objective is to just follow orders and their human um, protection can be overrided. Yeah. So I think um, hope is um, I don't know if you could tell, yeah. <laughs> but the um, our our team, they really wanted to make it look like it was happening, you know, like the same year the alien occurred, you know, with the film style and everything. Yeah. So, um, Noah and I talked about where hope fit in the chronological, chronological order. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the order of the films. And she's supposed to be like either contemporary or a little bit older than Ash. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Some <laughs> Somewhere around there. At least that's what we talked about. Um, of that's course, really cool. I don't know if Fox knows that, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love these little tidbits and I love all the little extra bits of information that the director and the actor comes up with to kind of put you into the role and the mood and kind of really <laughs> imagine yourself there. So that I really appreciate that detail. Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> uh, so. Were you a fan of the Alien movies before you did Alone? And, and if so, what was your favorite Alien movie? I had only seen Alien and Aliens before um, auditioning for um, Alien Alone, but I very much enjoyed them. So I was a fan, but not as big of a fan as I am now. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after, after getting involved in it, I got, like, hooked on it. So I've seen them all again since film prep just because I like them and I have little um xenomorph and face hugger things in my Amazon shopping cart that I'm <laughs> just waiting for and oh you actually posted this those little pins yeah um yeah I just got I'm waiting for it to come in the mail but I got the little um xenomorph um pin by <gasps> Megzy. Yeah. yeah, Megzy. Yeah, I got the black one, not the white one. Yeah. Because it matches more of my stuff. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited to get that. <laughs> one of us. One of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah. So outside of the alien films, are there any uh, movies that you like that have? AI characters or AI portrayals that you really like gravitate toward? Does Star Trek count? Yeah. Yeah. Star Trek. Oh, I love Battlestar Galactica. I was so sad. I had, it took me a year to finish the last episode of Battlestar Galactica because I didn't want to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> it so, was just too painful. Yeah. Yeah. I really. I really enjoyed that series, but it's like, as soon as I'm done with the TV series, it takes me a while to go back and watch it again. So yeah, I've been watching some for Halloween. I went as seven of nine. <laughs> oh yeah. I saw that. <laughs> so oh cool. yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You, how, how did you make the little um, piece that goes over the eye? It was a masquerade mask. It was silver. Mm -hmm. And so I, I broke it and then I, not I hot glued and something with it and drew over it to make the detail and then put an Instagram filter on it and it looked real, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, That's great. That's yeah. really creative. <laughs> Thanks. It was fun. <laughs> um so out of uh 
like all, all the uh, alien uh, movies, going back to the films, uh, is there any particular android who is your favorite and, and why? <laughs> I really like David just because he was interesting to see his evolution and how he was so fixated on, you know, humanity. And yeah, I liked him. Obviously, Ash. Oh, I really liked um, Bishop. David and Bishop. Yeah. Those two. Because, awesome. you know, Bishop's just cool. You know, he was just solid. Yeah. And then, like, I could totally, like, when I was a kid, I could totally imagine him, like, being the babysitter. <laughs> like, taking yeah, care of Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's the sort of android who's like, hey, Bishop, can you go get me some popcorn? He was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. He's like, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... So now going back to uh, filming alone, so what were the sets like when you arrived um, on set the first day? Could you tell me what it was like walking onto set and what it was like, the experience of it? It was really not what I expected because it was in a warehouse and or a film stage, which is essentially a warehouse with you know, stuff in it. So we walk in and it's all these like wood boards. And I'm like, oh, this is different. Cause I, at that, I mean, this was the first like stage production that I've done, like a film stage production. And um, so I just walk in there. I'm like, whoa, they're just wood boards. And then you turn the corner and there's like a whole like space station, a, like the whole shebang you know it was just really it was really cool it was not at all what you thought because like on the inside it looks like really legit and like you're in space and a spaceship but then it's like you turn the corner and you're just walking through a warehouse it was it was really cool lots of fun but it was just it was just my my first experience being on like you know a film stage so i was just like whoa, whoa." you know that's awesome um, yeah. What was your reaction when you first saw the practical face hugger on set, and and after that, how did you react to the practical xenomorph when you saw the costume? Okay, um, the face hugger. I got to see him in rehearsal. Uh, we rehearsed like one or two days before we started filming, and they brought the. Um, the animatronic one. He hadn't been fully um, dressed yet. Um, you can see that on my Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so um, they wanted to make sure that he wasn't too heavy and um, was going to be able to, like, you know, play around with easily and show us how to handle him. Um, so that was really cool. It was just really cool because you're like, whoa. And yeah. I had it was it was so cute to see like in person you know on tv you're like oh but then but like in person it was just like oh, i love it and yeah That's i was great. really sad I didn't, yeah exactly i was really sad i didn't get to take him home her home uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah and then the xenomorph suit was really cool um it was just hanging out in our dressing room the entire time we were filming. So we're just like, Hey dude, <laughs> we just got, it, it kind of threw me off guard a few times because it's, um, I'd be getting my makeup done. And then I look over and out of the corner of my eye, I see this tall black figure and I'm like, ah! I'm like, Oh, it's just Zena more. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that would make me shit myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, who wore who wore the suit after uh, you got to smother uh, James Paxton with the face hugger? James Paxton. <laughs> <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, how how did you do that scene um, where you are smothering him and like after you hit him across the head? Like, was that a lot of fun to do? <laughs> it was. And I don't know if you noticed in the short, I'm pretty sure it was very obvious, but I'm a very short person and James is a very tall person. So it was a lot of movie magic, um, you know, just getting things at the right angle to make it look like I was able to overpower him as a short robot. And um, the smothering scene was, again, some movie magic stuff. You had to like look like you're pressing it on, 
but it was actually really heavy. So having it lay flat on his face was very like, you know, not cool, let alone pushing it on him. So it's like looking like you're pushing it and holding it at the same time of like holding it away from his face enough, you know? So that was fun. Could you describe (laughs) how heavy it was? Like, is there a point of it was a bag of flour? Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good one. I was it was less than ten pounds, mm-hmm. but it was more than five. Okay. So it was. Was there a lot of takes? Been... Did your forearm start hurting because you had to hold it so long? <laughs> no, no, we actually we got that pretty quickly. I think maybe once for focus and then two for the shot. They knocked it out. Like we just went bam, 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 bam through most of the shots. It was awesome. Oh, um, so good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was really cool. The whole team was just very efficient and very, like, put together. Like, um, sorry, I'm saying like a lot. That's um, <laughs> There For the um, stages that we were on, there were some rooms that we used for, like, three different shots, but for three different scenes. And it was really cool how the – production art department like reshape them and all of a sudden you're in a lab oh you're back in the bunker and it's like oh you're actually over here now you know um (laughs) I was just thoroughly impressed because one day I think it was the first day um the bunker room was completely like it looked like a living space like you had the little desk in the corner that had um all the welding equipment and then you had the desk where everybody, like the community desk, and then you had like the bunk beds. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, or was it the last day, um, which every day we filmed the lab scene, it was a completely different space. No bunk beds, no tables. They had like the lab table, and then you had like all this lab equipment, and then the special door that I pulled the um, face hugger out of. And it was just, whoa. I was. <laughs> Yeah, it was really cool to see how they transformed all the different spaces to work for everything. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think happened to Hope after the the alien was birthed? Did you, do you, like, did you talk to um, Noah about that or, or even James and, like, theorized about what happened to her and the alien? Well, we joked about a couple of things, like either we were just going to be best friends flying through space and attacking <laughs> other people, or um, I think everybody was like, oh, you're dead. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. The alien is known to, to kill androids, of course, like you've, you've yeah. seen Bishop get killed, but it's only if the alien, uh, if you were in the way of the alien getting something else. If nothing else right. was there, then I think you'd totally be alive flying through space, killing people exactly. together. <laughs> exactly. Until after he ate James, then he might have gotten hungry and confused me with something. But, yeah, I think we would have been best friends flying through space, attacking other planets and ships. That's awesome. <laughs> totally yeah. a spin-off series. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Hope in the Xeno. <laughs> um, so... Uh, how, what are your thoughts? Because, like, on on my my blog and my podcast, we also have interests in um, AI, robotics, and science fiction, and how uh, it interacts with humanity. What are your thoughts on um, artificial intelligence and what sort of role it will play in the future of humanity? And and do you think it's something that we should be afraid of or something that we should embrace? I am honestly fifty fifty on that because. Um, like I knew a little bit about the AI progress in the science field before um, Alien Alone. And some of the, I think it was Bill Gates said we had to be like <laughs> super freaked out. I was like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden all the Terminator movies go through my head and I'm like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but then at the same time, um, there's like, you know, all these stories about how, you know, you can put a limit on AI but it's like if, I don't know, it kind of freaks me out. But at the same time, I think it's really cool. Like, 
I like it when I'm typing up an email and then Google just automatically knows what I'm going to say. Um, you know, and it's press enter and then I'm like, ah, oh, okay. That's what, yep. Um, <laughs> when it's yeah, helpful, I mean, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, what, do you want it to be helpful for now and then harmful years down the line? Or do you want it to be, or do you just don't care? You know what I mean? I don't know. Cause there, there was like something super freaky that happened. I think it was Google. They started um, playing with AI and the computer started making its own language and the um, creators, they couldn't understand it. So they had no idea what the computer was saying to the other computer that had AI. So they had to shut down the system. And I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) As long as there is a fail safe switch off button, maybe it's okay. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Let's play, pray for the red button. <laughs> yes, yes. We all need a red button <laughs> for that. Um, when, when you were uh, at the shoot, was, was there any particular moment that you didn't enjoy? <laughs> um, it got hot at one point. And that was that was it. Hot? Can you describe why? Um, Well, since we were filming in a warehouse and we needed it to be quiet, the vent of the fans had to be turned off. So there was no AC. Um, And so we just, with all the lights going, it got hot at one point. And (laughs) that was the most unpleasant it was. (laughs) So that's all. It was, that was like only one day, I think, that it got hot, but. Yeah, <laughs> you were telling me before that you had a scene with um, the face hugger uh, that got cut, which was it was sitting on your shoulder. I think it's on the photo on your Instagram, and it was like lots of like goo was coming off it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was that was really cool and really nasty at the same time. <laughs> what? You're like, oh, this is awesome, and then you're like, oh, I like it all. <laughs> So what, yeah. what, what was the what was the stuff that they used for the goo? Was it KY jelly like they did with the other movies? <laughs> no, no, we talked about that and we joked about that, but we didn't have it. We had something else that she found. I don't know if I mentioned our makeup artist Jordan Sanders. She's fantastic, um, but she found she found some other sort of like gelatin type thing to use. It wasn't KY jelly because she had it in a like a putty bowl. Yeah. So, yeah, it was really, it was really fun. She just like lapped us all up in it, and James's scene was so cool, like so artsy with the um, goo just dripping on his face when he was like freaking out, you know, about the face hugger. I was like, oh, that looks awesome, and I was like, oh, that's got to be nasty though. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Um, was there um. Uh, your most memorable moment from the shoot like when when you think about uh, the short film what was what's your first thought all of them um um, let me think um I guess it was the whole like yeah, the whole face hugger, like first seeing the face hugger um, in the short, that was not one of the first scenes we shot. It was like much later into the shoot, but it was, um, that was fun. Yeah, that and um, yeah, I mean, the whole set was just fun. Like when I think of it, like I have like different moments from, we only shot for three days, um, but it was like, yeah, I have different moments from each day that all just like rush to my mind. Like, yeah, like I keep in contact with most of the people, you know, like James and I are friends now and, you know, we're all like hanging out and stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <cool. laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a really great set. Like everybody on there was really cool, like solid people, you know, that you that you keep in touch with because everybody was just great and really loved the franchise and just loved doing what they were doing so that's so great to hear because like i i love the movies so much that i like blog and post about them 24 7 um yeah (laughs) but being able to to hear that you know people who love the films who are like big fans wanted to 
contribute and put this thing together and, and they are so passionate about it that they you know that they love to celebrate it with each other even beyond the filming so that's fantastic yeah. yeah and it's been really cool too like posting about it um all these people that i had no idea liked alien so much they've been like oh my gosh you you did alien oh my gosh i'm like the biggest fan and i was like oh i had no idea about that you you know <laughs> yeah it's like cool it's like the, a thing that people don't really talk about like when when alien covenant came out and um i went to watch it with my friends and then i started a, a messenger group straight after because i wanted to talk about the movie and they were like clara calm down <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about this way too much um we, we love that like, you're passionate you're about it but you yeah. just you know you could be your bad self over there and i'm like oh, well, i need to talk to somebody about this this is there's so much to discuss <laughs> yeah. and that is that one your favorite one coming it yeah yeah i absolutely yeah. i love and adore that movie on so many different levels i love the acting of michael fassbender and the dual roles i really love uh katherine watterson she plays this very vulnerable sort of girl at the beginning she's so much of a follower following her husband to space not really having direction but then finding her own toward the end i love david's lab the drawings you know yeah David being like fucking crazy <laughs> going yeah. off the deep end i love the, the practical effects of shaw's dead body which is like oh it really hurt because i really loved her character but at right. the same time it's it's it was unexpected you know, you've yeah. watched all the movies and you think something's going to happen. Yeah, she's totally going to be the new Ripley. And then she wasn't. <laughs> and it was just subverted my expectations. What was your ex experience with Alien Covenant? Did you like it? Oh, I did. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then when we were doing like research for Alien, um, when we were talking to some of the Fox people, they said <laughs> that it, it didn't get a good re um, receiving. I was like, what? I was like, I enjoyed that film so much. Um, but yeah, I thought it was very, it was very pretty to look at too. Like the visuals, it was just, wow. Yeah, it's but, gorgeous. Yeah. And even like the, the music, the score, it's just, there's so many moments in that film that are, I could be raving about it all day, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I really, yeah. just, especially liked the space scenes. They really captured that look that they were in space when but when you look at the behind the scenes they're just on a sound stage and they've just got uh they've just got um uh was it danny mcbride up on a crane in this suit and like i read an interview apparently he was freaking out because he like he just likes small spaces but he wanted to impress ridley scott so he just kept quiet <laughs> <laughs> you know just little things like that i really yeah, yeah. i love that film that's so funny <laughs> yeah did you... Yeah, that one and Alien were my favorite of all yeah. of them. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, did you get to take any souvenirs home from doing the shoot of Alien Alone? No. no. <laughs> I was really sad. I mean, they... okay, well, technically I did. They had some copies of the face drawing that I, like, freak out on. Mm -hmm. um, so I have that. But, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But I really, oh, and I really wanted the face hugger, but Noah kept it. And that's understandable. He's the creator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, man. And they had all these, I don't know, like, there was so much detail into all the little things that were on there. Um, we had some really cool, like, um, recreation artists, like, make these cool, um, oh, that was my phone, um, <laughs> make these cool, like, you know, little beer bottles that were, um, featured in the original and like all these little things that said like Wayland yutani Wayland yutani you know what I mean? Yeah. All over the place. It was so cool. Like just, I want to take one of those too, but they had to, they were bought by somebody. I, I don't know. I just wasn't allowed to take anything. No. <laughs> But that's cool that you got pictures. to keep the drawings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At least yeah. one of them. Um, yeah. do, do you feel like Hope kind of ended up a bit like David because of her isolation? She went a bit crazy and then kind of got attached to uh, the facehugger as opposed to the facehugger being attached to you. <laughs> oh. And, and yes. started doing all these drawings. Do you think that, that that was the obsession that started? 
Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Because um, you know, synthetics are um, service robots, and if you don't have anybody, to, like I feel like it was kind of, you know, they're made to serve, and she didn't have anybody to serve, and then the face hugger comes up, and she's like, "I'll serve you." You know what I mean? Oh, I get it. That's really cool. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah. So, and plus, um, yeah, I'm like, plus, how would you feel if somebody left you, like, on some, like, obviously, we've seen in the series that the synthetics understand emotion, and they learn a lot about humans, and whether they realize it or not, like, you know, they have human isms and everything, and it's like, while they generally they're not really supposed to think for themselves outside of like basic one two three type stuff as we've seen like you know in the films they do like like we said earlier we can't really control where ai goes if it's left on its own to evolve so after being alone for well over a year by yourself and you're kind of like resentful yeah. like i'm left alone the ship doesn't even like me and this face hugger's here, and it jumped right on me first time it saw me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like from watching Alien alone, I kind of understand Alien Covenant more, if that makes any sense. Because uh, David feeling alone, like because we are not really sure what happened to Elizabeth Shaw, and she could have been dying, and then David's like, I've got to try to keep her alive. What are these things? What if I just... You know, he, he doesn't see the difference between her dying and then becoming an a, a alien. Right. <laughs> so could yeah. he have done that? So, you know, to try to keep her alive in a different way. So it's really, really cool that the sort of ideas that it's kind of introduced into the whole universe. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's, yeah. there could be lots done in future for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all, yeah, that, it all connected to me. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. You know, um, this goes hand in hand with these you know what i mean <laughs> yeah um what are uh apart from uh, alien alone because obviously you've had like tremendous fun on this project and that's fantastic uh are there um any other projects that you've been on that you found quite memorable and, and do you have any upcoming projects that people should know about oh yes and yes um <laughs> <laughs> um well like all sets are fun <laughs> except when you get food poisoning then that's not fun mm. but um <laughs> but yeah um i did a horror film a little while ago it's called truth or dare it's on netflix like i don't know if it's on netflix in australia but i know it's here yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah um that one was fun they dyed my hair black for that and it was you know it's a horror film so you're running around screaming and um, it was like night shoot. Like I didn't <laughs> like go home till like 7am, but, oh, um, wow. yeah, it was really cool because, um, I'm supposed to pour acid on my head and in order to protect myself from the acid, I'm supposed to mix baking soda. Yeah. Baking soda and water together, but it wasn't showing up right on camera. Like you're supposed to mix it together and pour it on yourself. Um, it was showing up right on camera, so we mixed flour with water, and it was very chunky. And it looks great on camera, but it took about two weeks to get out of my hair. Oh, so. no. Yeah, because flour and water become glue. <laughs> yeah. It, it was loads of fun, though. And there's so many, like, funky, funny pictures out there. So, one, it was fun dyeing my hair a color it, it had never been before and, you know, getting to play around with that for a little bit. And then all that was just... It's just fun. <laughs> but, yeah. And then um, I'm getting ready to fly um, back to the East Coast. I'm currently in L.A. And I'll be flying out to Maryland, which is a state on the East Coast um, of the United States, um, to film an untitled horse movie. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good that you've like got all these projects coming up and, and, and things haven't quieted down for you because like nothing's more sad than like being involved in a great project like this and all of a sudden there's a bit of a lull and it's like, yeah, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, we finished filming alone, and it was, like, straight into the holidays for me. So there was not a lot of downtime. <laughs> it was, like, straight, like, holiday, 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 you know? <laughs> um, is, are there any particular uh, stories about your experience on set you'd like to share with us that you haven't told us yet? Ah. Uh... Well, I can say working with um, James was really cool. He was, like, such a really, like, down-to-earth, super genuine person um, that, I don't know, it was, just, it was just really cool because he was so very encouraging, you know? And as an actor, when, um, like, especially, like, We've seen with Star Wars that, like, the people that jump into a franchise as, like, new characters, as lead new characters, they get, like, ripped apart by the critics and everything, you know? Like, Daisy Ridley, she deleted all social media because of the fans that were like, you're not Princess Leia, how dare you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, people just saying mean things. But um, he was, like, super encouraging. He was, like, I don't know. It was just really cool because he's like you know done he's done more than i have and you know he grew up in hollywood with his dad and everything have have you watched um westworld yes oh that's another one that i like ain because <laughs> like, oh. i love that series you can go from like uh acting as androids acting as humans and then yeah. acting as androids it's just <laughs> amazing <laughs> they're so cool i just i watch have you seen the original westworld movie yeah 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 i just watched that like a couple of weeks ago and i was like oh my god <laughs> so they're it's so amazing cool. how far they've come like from yeah. from something like that to, to now and like having tv series that regularly churn out that sort of like amazing like dialogue and stories and it's just yeah really awesome <laughs> yeah it's so they're great, man. Video protection now is just like, whoa, like insane. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for taking the time to answer our questions. Is there anything you'd like to say as a final message before you go? Uh, just watch the short and be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. So, Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, this is Mother 9000 of Studio Yutani signing off. This is Taylor Lyons signing off. Remember to like, share, or support Studio Yutani on Patreon. And subscribe to yutani.studio to stay up to date. Transmission complete. This is Mother 9000, signing off.